hi, beautiful human. I'm Zach. That is Dan. We welcome back to the studio. Pete Wentz, a Fall Out Boy. Woo. Thanks. <laughs> the applause really went off. We're going to add that in post. <laughs> Just want to hype up the energy, you know, get us going. Like when you come into the morning show and you got to do the applause yourself yeah. as well. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I liked it. Thank you for being here. Thank you. This is an interesting amount of space between us is isn't it? it well i feel like you said this the last time you came oh, to our did studio I? which was down the street oh i did but, wait, that. did it, I, it, I said it was too much space then too but you you ended up liking it because the headphones make you f you kind of forget it you know yeah, yeah yeah totally you don't feel far apart you just you, you may look far apart yeah yeah it, from here it feels like a little bit in in batman when he's like having the soup with vicky vale in the first one in the 89 batman this is a deep cut but <laughs> and they're like all the way across the table and he's will you please pass the salt it's like that's i mean i can make it like a present day comparison it's like how like vladimir putin has every meal have you ever seen yeah. photos of him at a dining room table vladimir putin batman it's same all the same shit, man <laughs> Same shit. No, but this guy literally sits at a giant table on one side because he's afraid somebody's going to poison him. Oh, wow. So, like, it's like... Is a, that what this is about right here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm afraid you're going to poison me. <laughs> it's like, someone check the Celsius. <laughs> we bonded over Celsius in a very passionate way, and you really... You, you fuck with it. I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was just saying that, like, I'm like a grape cola kind of guy, which is, I understand, you know, but then the, the, the apple has been the one for me and you, you saying that it's existing, like, it's like weird that it's on the East Coast. That's yeah. so strange. Uh, by the way, Pete Wentz is looking for a green apple cherry flavor of Celsius. Hard to find here on the West Coast. Very don't popular. Don't bring a thousand East. to the shows. That'll be too much for me. The, the, but would it? Just one. Yeah. Okay, that, <laughs> that works. Just a one for me. Is it wild to think that, like, e even after all these years, you do have a fan base that is waiting for you to drop Easter eggs like that? So when they show up to your tours, they can come through and make a moment with you? Yes, it is very wild that that's that that exists, and I, there's definitely like I would have shown up and given like George Lucas something I think probably or something like you know like if I had had the the ability to go to like Skywalker Ranch or something I would have done that probably. So does that make you better understand the connection that people have with the art that you make and still make today? I I really under not understand, but I. Uh, I appreciate fan culture and like there's things that I'm super into and like things that I'm like why wouldn't they do it like this and like I love it so much and you know whatever so I have like a deep appreciation for that and so like when people are like I love this thing but I don't love that you know whatever like, I can totally um, empathize with it at least you know so can you tell me why people still identify in Fall Out Boy today um, I would say that there, that there's two, a couple elements to Fall Out Boy. I would say one is like Patrick's voice and not being Patrick, I can probably talk about it. And for some people, he could literally just, you know, like sing the phone book and it would be, mm. and people just, I think, really love it. And then I think, um, we've never tried to be really relatable. Like we just kind of sing about what we sing about and like at times it's been a little worrisome in the way that it's like I maybe no one will re relate to it but I just feel like we've never pandered like we've never thought that people couldn't figure it out or that they wouldn't be into Burna Boy or Jay-Z honestly like we just kind of always were like we're just gonna do it like a big art project and I think um that we've been doing it long enough that people can be like you know it's like Batman, James Bond, Metallica, whatever, like this, something that's this expansive, you can be like, I like some of this stuff, I don't like all of this stuff, and I can like create an order and I can debate people about it, and, and so I think that there's elements of that there, but then I think that there's, some of it's like a little bit, I mean, some of it's serendipity or luck or whatever you want to call it, the universe like letting us do it 22 years later or something. I, it what is the biggest change between how you made your first album compared to how you made this most recent? So with our very, f it, this most recent was very similar to how we made like maybe our second or third album. Um, the first album, we literally had no money, like none. We were in, um, or this was, I don't know, people will just like, because I know how it is, like they're going to say it's our second album, but whatever. So, but whatever. Take this to your grave, that album. Uh we recorded it in Wisconsin. We had no money. They would give us, um, the studio would give us 
a thing of Coke and a thing of Sprite every week, like a two liter. And then we were like, instead of that, can we just like have peanut butter and jelly? Because <laughs> we just had no money. Um, so th- when we recorded our first major label record, there was like a lot of like, oh, you can like just sit here and like figure out like the guitar sound. Like you have time to do that, you know, or whatever. <laughs> and we worked with Neil Avron for the first time. And <clears throat> the thing that was similar about this album to that is that we worked with Neil Avron again. But the first time we worked with Neil, it was like a little like, we fought with each other all the time. And like, it was a lot of like, Neil was like the boy scout leader, kind of like, you guys are going to be okay. Like we're going to, everyone's going to, you know, survive this or whatever. Cause we just like literally were maniacs, you know what I mean? And I think this time it was a little bit like when you go back to your parents' house for Thanksgiving, the first time after college or something. And you're like, I can like drink here in front of people. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I'm, a, I'm like kind of an adult or whatever, you know? And it's like, you have the, the relationship like you're still there with your parents in your old house, but like the it's you're an adult, you know, or whatever. And I think that's what it was like to go in and record with Neil this time. You why know? do you want to go back? And why was it the right time? I did not want to go back. I was very nervous that we were going to make that Patrick really, because Patrick really wanted to work with Neil. And I was very nervous that he wanted to make like a throwback record. And I am not inherently against throwback art. Um, I think that it's very difficult to make when the first time you make it, you're like kind of like hungry and you're in a van and you don't, you know, like you're getting peanut butter and jelly or whatever, you know, like, and so like that, there's some art that's made from like kind of like desperation there. Totally, totally. And it's harder to make that when you're like figuring out your kid's school drop-offs or whatever, you know, like it's harder to feel that desperate. It's a different kind of desperation. To a point where it can come off fake. Super inauthentic yeah. or like just like where you're like, oh, they were trying to make like the like super punk record, but it doesn't sound like that at all. Um, and then I called Neil and Neil was like, the first thing he said was, we cannot make old Fallout Boy. And I was like, oh, OK, that's cool. I'm in then definitely because I love Neil so much. Um, but I was just a little worried about it. And he uh, took it in ways and places, you know, like he, you know, like those trippy 70s cartoons where they're like characters in the forest come al- come to life or something like that. He like there was a point where we were like sitting there and he turned to me and he's like, "What are we singing about?" No, what are we singing about? And I felt like his face was like this far away from me and he was like a wise owl or something and I was like tripping or something because he was just like inside me and it was good because it pushed the record to be about something more than I guess it could have been. What did it end up being about, but ultimately, what did you want it to be about before you started? Uh, before we started it, I th- think, like, I always want records, I I want them to have, like, a cohesive narrative and, like, be kind of like a, um, you know, standalone piece, you know, standalone piece, and you can make a movie of it and whatever, but, like, it doesn't ever really end up like that to me. And also, I always want to explain things like explain the last five years and like explain what we've been going through and what everyone's been going through. Um, and it didn't end up like that. I think it ended up being every September. I feel like mortality. Like I feel a lot of like I have like these deep anxious feelings about mortality. And I start thinking like time feels like it's flying and like, my parents like look like my grandparents and like my kids look the way I feel like I looked at a time when my family, like, like these, these like important family moments in my life, you know what I mean? And I'm like trying to figure out like, like how do you slow down time or how do you, I don't really know. And you know, my, you don't No, you you don't. Yeah, totally. And for me, it can be super paralyzing, you know, like it can be like, oh shit, like I'm going to not exist one day and everyone I love is not going to exist one day. So like, I'm just not going to do anything. I'm just going to sit at my house and do nothing. And so there's a big part of the record that's kind of that, but then there's another part of the record that's like, well, you have to do like everything because you're not going to exist one day. So you have to do everything. You have to make art and you have to hang out with your friends and like eat food and you know, you have to do everything, all of it. So it, it, I mean, it's beautiful and we've listened to it a bunch. Oh, cool. Yeah. It's fucking amazing. Oh, thank you. It's fucking great. Thank you. Does Amazon know this room exists? This is like a little <laughs> crazy little purple room in, within the Amazon headquarters. And it's almost like their budget is so big here that and it's like, oh, us. we can like slide this under the rug. This like crazy little like, 
<laughs> show. <laughs> it is very out of the way from everything else in this building. They put us in the everything back Everything else here looks like it's like it could be shipped somewhere and like it's like from the future, like, you know, or whatever. And it's then like there's the, you walk into this room and you're like, you're like in your like kid's man cave. And, Literally. And you're like, do they, do they know? Is this like an oversight that like, do they know this room? <laughs> By the way, that couch is literally on a stage that we made out of cinder blocks. So. Amazing. And that it's couch was originally found in the trash can and we fixed it. Amazing. Uh, God, it is pretty fucking cool. Um, so what do you bring with you from the second album that you find shows up in this last one? So I think that this is more of a sister album of, and this is like pr- probably deeper for Fall Boy fans, of, of Infinity on High. Um, there's like the same energy to it. There's songs on here that we would have, like Love from the Other Side would have been on Infinity on High if we could have written that. We just didn't have the tools to to actually do that. What do you have now that you didn't have then? I think that there's, uh, that's a great question. No one's asked that. Um, I think that the, the answer is, I remember going to, um, like, dude, I had the, the funniest thing, like, when we were, like, you know, 20 or whatever, like, my friend was like, we're, we should be flight attendants. Like, imagine breakfast in Paris. And I was like, what? This sounds f- so fucking stupid. Like, <laughs> you don't get to actually do that, dude. Like, you're just, like, going back and forth between, like, Akron, Ohio or something. Like, you're, you're not going to be on the, the Paris flight where they just, like, let you eat croissants or whatever. Um, but the idea stuck with me, and I remember we were in Europe, and me and Joe, we had a bunch of days off, and me and Joe cut out to... Florence to Italy and I was at some like just like sh- not shack but like some little stand in uh, Florence and I was like this is like the best pizza I've ever had how's the best pizza I ever had at like some little stand in Florence and I started thinking about it in the way that like it was simple and they just used the best ingredients so they just like were like there's four ingredients but they're like the best ingredients so there's doesn't need to be any of the sauce to cover it all up and I feel like in the past we've been a band that does like a little bit like of a kitchen sink recording where we put like everything in and more and like whatever and like a little bit of like make a great sauce because then it doesn't really like matter how the steak is cooked you know what I mean like and so I think in this one we actually reduced it and we were kind of like let's get it to its most simple form and use the the highest quality ingredients and not try to keep adding to it. And we couldn't have done that back then. So uh, what changes? Is it Guys, are we going to be drinking Celsius during this or what? That we should, right? Are we not sponsored? Is that no, why no, we're not allowed to? Honestly, can... Uh, <laughs> Let me see if we can get some. Somebody back can't... there got my, my apple? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Is it like hidden somewhere <laughs> in the building? <laughs> we can text Cameron. No, we have some for you uh, on the other side oh, in your green room. Um, but, I'm just kidding. We don't really need to. Do we need to like tape it up or are we... No, go, it's are fine. we going for the sponsorship? I, I literally keep his LCS on my desk all the time, but we are going for the sponsorship at all times. So if you're so helping fire, this. Fire is, it up. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just look dead in the camera and let them know how much you love it. Rip. Um, yeah, but what changes where you can only lean on equality and not distraction? Is it musicianship? Is it confidence? Is it a combination of the two? I think that there's some confidence. I think that, like, you know, when you're. Um, or at least for me, when you're younger, you're trying to, like, prove it, and you're, like, everything you do, you're, like, we got to do the solo, we got to do the, you know, like, to the utmost or whatever, and as you get older, you're, like, oh, it's actually, like, cool how Dave Grohl, like, gives leaves space, you know what I mean? And it actually makes it more effective when you do the thing when you've left the space and you're not doing it all the time, you know what I mean? And it's, like... Very hard to learn that without just going through it and doing it and making a bunch of, uh, you know, paintings where it, like, ends up being, like, kind of, like, muddy looking. And you're like, well, maybe there was, like, a little too much color. (laughs) You know what I mean? Like, being able to, like, step away from it and be like, this is good as it is. You don't need to just keep adding to it. Less is more. Less is more. And I do think, like, confidence is attached to that because... You know, sometimes, like, you add more things to it because you don't trust your... You just... You feel like you need to add more for... I don't know, like... Do you get what I'm saying? Like... Totally. There, like... It's just never enough. Yeah, and you just... I don't know. You can't get it right, and you just feel like there's no other answer besides actually, like, leaning on less. Leaning on you as opposed to everything but. Totally. And I think also, like, you know, when you're... Your goal, right, is, like you know, is for people to be like, oh, it sounds like Fall Out Boy. This sounds like the, you know, the Zach Sang show, you know, or whatever. Like, y- you are the descriptor. Like, and and even more than that, like, I think about it like, you know, I think Ryan Johnson had a quote, and it's like, it's not really like a great 
Wikipedia unless there's like aftermath. You know what I mean? Like so like things that were affected because of this. You know what I mean? And so like to me having that confidence in your just in your thing being singularly you. You know what I mean? Like it's just this is who we are and so like it doesn't need to be competitive with this or competitive with that it just is us um but you can't get there without you know making a bunch of albums and going through highs and lows and you know what i mean like you have totally. to go on the whole trip or it's, you I, I talked to patrick about it a bunch because i know that they're we put out this record mania i think we came in talked to you guys on that and there was like a lot of frustration in that record like there was a lot of like we'd made two records before um in a time when, like, kind of, like, I was trying to describe it to someone. I can't remember who I was trying to describe it to, but I was like, it was a little bit like The Last of Us, like the the two records we made after the break, like, where you're like, we're just trying to get across and not get bitten by the fucking zombies. You know what I mean? Like, it's... But why? Why did you feel the need to even do an album if it wasn't... We wanted to exist as a band and make pop art in a time that was particularly hostile to bands. Like, there just weren't any bands, you know, like, at the time. Yeah. Um, in the pop sphere, really, there were, like, not... There was... You can count them on a hand. Um, but we wanted to. But it was just really difficult. You know, like, it was, like... It was it was difficult, and it was frustrating. And so I think that Mania was born from that frustration. Like, if, you, if I listen to Young and Menace, I'm like, damn, like, that is a frustrated song. You know what I mean? And... Me and Patrick, I think, talked about it a little bit. I don't think you get so much for Stardust if you don't do Mania. You know what I mean? Like, it's like when you're going through the mall and you're, like, sniffing perfumes. Like, you, at one point, you have to sniff the coffee Not to totally. get back into the perfume. You know what I mean? You can't just, your nose is just, like, all perfume and you can't even smell anything. But those you know? experiences end up, like, leading to leading you to where you need to be, right? Totally. And when you're writing this album, and when you're talking about, like, what it ended up being, right, this, the, the two sides of it, oh, my God, yes, there are oh, Celsius here. Celsius. Yes, oh, Amy, great. you're amazing. Um, see, I'm not, is it a watermelon flavor? You like the watermelon. I will, I will, the watermelon flavor is the last of us for me. You know, like, I can survive on it. Yeah. <laughs> I'll drink a Fuji apple pear, I guess. It's okay. See, so I'm yeah. telling you, that's what they have. Has anyone here. ever mixed them? Try it. Mm. I don't know. Today this give you the be day. A tough, this might be a tough. I'm gonna. I'll fire one of these up though. Do you guys want one of these? Yeah, I'll take one of those. Which one do you want? Um, uh, whatever one right? you don't want. No, what you, you don't want this shit. No, you. Whatever you want. Yeah. It's all right. You it's all right. It's yeah, I can catch it. I'm, I'm good. Can Thanks. you do? Yeah. Oh yes. Oh, they're ice cold, huh? Yeah, they are. Slightly worried, but I saw Brady throw the trophy, so I knew, you know. <laughs> if drunk Brady can throw the trophy and not throw it in the bottom of the bay, I could be okay. <laughs> This album, the way you described it in terms of, like, the two sides uh, of it, where it started and where it ended up coming, it seems incredibly personal. How, how does the writing process actually go down here? Is it you crafting things to give to Patrick? Is it you doing things on your own and then bringing it to, like, what is it? How does it operate? It goes all different ways. The way that it happened the most on this album was I gave him, like, big chunks of stuff and he created melodies from that just like he said that he just sees a melody when he's when he reads it um and then we would go in and like re what are you giving him uh i i write on all, all different ways i write a lot of times on notes on the phone but then i feel like i get different stuff if i write on a notebook and then i do a lot of like writing in the car but like with somebody that i'm driving with so i'll always be like I'll give him, like, three random words. Like, I'm like, write down, blah, 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 you know, and whatever, dolphins or, like, you know, the pink seashell, and text it to me. And my kid's always like, this is so fucking stupid. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, it's like... No, but there's, so there's a method here. Yeah, I mean, kind of. And and so, and so I, and then I send it to him, and then we will fill in the blanks. And then lots of times I'll try to jam something to him. Like, I'll send him something that I really want over and over again. And he's like, just so you know, I saw it. It doesn't work. <laughs> You know what I mean? Um, yeah. So that's the methodology for the most part. The le I mean, so uh, hold me like a grudge. Fucking so good. Oh, thank you so much. That's awesome. Where does that song come from? Where is it bred from? I mean, someone sent, texted me the other day, Ryland, who was in um, Cobra Starship. He was like, he was like, how is "Hold Me Like a Grudge" not a Fall Out Boy song title already? <laughs> and I was like, yeah, that's so weird. Like, there's this. Thing, and I don't know what the name for it. There has to be like a Japanese word for it, like for a thing that should exist but doesn't exist yet. Mm. It's like the opposite of the 
Berenstein Bears effect or something. It's like <laughs> it's it. into the future or something. You know what I mean? Like where you're like, I'm sure that exists, but it actually doesn't exist yet. But it does exist now. But it does ex- exist now. So who are you, like, we're, we're like, I mean. I mean, we're in like a Terminator 2 time loop where it makes no sense. No, it's crazy. <laughs> but where does it come from? Um, All I do is hold grudges and all I want is somebody to hold me like the grudges I hold. Yeah. Um, Against them. I mean, to me, uh, oftentimes, I think that, you know, I am I personally think that, like, for me, I probably, like, ate some, like, paint chips when I was little or something because, <laughs> like, when I'm having normal conversations with people, lots of times I think that something's, like, a super common anecdote or, like, super common metaphor. And then while I'm saying it, and lots of times when I'm in interviews, they're, like, He's not answering the question. <laughs> and, and I'm like, fuck, I thought I was like so deep within like, you know, like what everybody thinks or whatever. Um, so I think that some of it comes from that. Like it comes from a, a misunderstanding um, of of like culture or misunderstanding of like what I, th- you know, whatever. And then Patrick has a similar one musically, I think, you know, like where it's like a little off, like where he's like, he's like, this is. Like the song "Flu Game" or like "Arms Race," he's like, "This is a pop song," and I'm like, "Dude, this is fucking crazy. This is like a nightmare to play at pop radio," which is perfect. You know what I mean? Like, it's like the perfect song for us. But like, there's no way you think that this sounds like like Justin Timberlake or something. But I think he does, maybe. Jesus, but where does "Hold Me" like so? When you finish "Hold Me Like a Grudge," do you think this is a hit, or do you think that this is just one of the others? Um, when Patrick played, okay, so when Patrick played me. Uh, Love from the Other Side I was sure that was the first song That Fall Out Boy fans should hear And I don't really know why But like my gut just told me that And it was like the first song I wanted to hear Um, When he played Hold Me Like a Grudge I felt like the verse groove I'd heard in like 2000s alt rock a little bit Like dun 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 You know or whatever Even like going back to like Queen or something But then I was like wow the chorus is so uniquely Patrick Stump you know what I mean it's so like what he like something he would come up with melodically phrasing wise all of it so anytime anyone has ever told me that Fall Out Boy like they're like uh this is a hit song it has it has 95 percent been incorrect (laughs) because songs I think that (laughs) would be hits for other bands like aren't really for us and we're like these like weird like little like alien looking guys that like kind of like you know like I don't really know we're not like really meant to be pop stars or something so like the songs that do work are like Sugar We're Going Down or like like ones where you're like well no other band could make this song it doesn't even make any sense really you know what I mean <laughs> but what song surprised you um what song surprised me There's been some surprises that I thought were going to be hits. I definitely thought, um, I don't really, I'm like a lawyer with the way I'm trying to get you off, which is this song, Me and You, I think is maybe the short version. I kind of think I thought that was going to be a hit, but then I, I doc, we doctored it a bunch before, like in the studio. The demo, I think, was a hit, and then we doctored the actual version, and so it wasn't really a hit. The simplest versions of Fall Out Boy songs, I think that, work on a bigger level are songs like thanks for the memories even though they weren't so great like these songs that are like they're simple like live love laugh but like they're done (laughs) by like a a person who like doesn't really understand how it all works so they're like out of order or something you know what i mean like it's like ready fire aim and people are like perfect (laughs) arms race wasn't very simple though was it no and arms race is like probably the strangest song to it's got to be like if you were making a list of the top 10 strangest pop songs of the 2000s, that song would be on the list for sure. I remember playing it at the American Music Awards at like the one where it's like drop it like it's hot was happening and like that. And like it's like one where they like are kind of like, oh, your band was like huge last year. So, of course, you guys can play this. And so we were like, OK, perfect. So we want like um, four foot sized crickets on stage with us. And they were like they were like, yeah, but like what do you really want we're like no 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 we want four or five four, four, four foot size crickets we want the whole show to start with the sound of crickets they're like this sounds not good and then we're playing like a a punk song you know like a weird punk song that like and i remember playing it and you just watch um people who are like I, I, I have 
like you know like the people in the crowd the seat fillers are like like what is happening <laughs> like i thought we were going to hear like you know like hollaback girl or something and we're getting this instead like these guys in like jeans that are so tight you can see like every crevice four foot crickets and like a song <laughs> that's you know a little too fast but in the moment like he, he, as regia says that sounds but even like when you describe the way w- what you were wearing it's ridiculous to some but also generationally defining to so many Yes. Do you realize that in the moment? I think that, you know, like when you're, you know, I'm not really good at surfing or something, but like when when you don't catch the wave a bunch of times, you're like, fuck, I don't can never figure this out. And then like I've always like gone to lessons and stuff like where a guy will like push you and then you catch it and you're in it and you're like feel the flow and you're like, I can't describe it, but like that time it worked. You know what I mean? And I feel like when you're part of a, a, a counterculture wave or like the alternate wave you can feel like you're in it and a part of it but you're like just in it and a part of it and like sometimes you can influence it a little bit but like I don't think that there's like any real leader you're just all being disruptive right like and then like and every once in a while you'll pop up at the top of someone else you know but like you're you're all part of this disruptive thing yeah it's more it- Lost you. Oh, that was so weird. Yeah, it's <laughs> Amazon's on to them, guys. Yeah. The out. mics are cut. <laughs> no, they've been listening, dude. They're always listening. Um, they're not listening. That's a joke. Uh, really, it's a joke. I swear to God, Jeff. I swear to God. Um, no, but like, it, it's fascinating that you say that because some people would sit on the couch and be like, "Oh, they take credit for it," but the reality is, like, it's it was the collection of all of you working 100%. together. One hundred percent. It, and I think also, like, you weren't even always so much working together as people were jointly working opposed to what the the culture culture was, you know? And I think you see, like, the best... To me, you see these great reflections of uh, counterculture when, when, when pop culture is either so, like, autocratic or divisive. Like, when with Reagan, there was, like, great, great punk music and, like, early hip-hop, you know? Like, I feel like you saw... Green Day had a phenomenal record in the early 2000s. I I think hip hop really came to be because of a lot of that. You know, like they didn't like for a culture that didn't have access to like pop the pop world, just kind of created its own platform, and now is like the biggest platform on the planet. Um, yeah. So I think that like oftentimes it's it's like a bunch of people that don't fit in, just like not fitting in together. Is alternative dead? I don't think so at all. I think that, first of all, like, I think you could have, like, a really big, long conversation, which is probably, like, more of, like, a fireside conversation or something, than, like, that is, like, like what really is al- alternative and, like, is Lil Uzi alternative and, like, what are we, you know, like, that debate. But if we're talking, um, like, sh- sheer, like, guitar alternative rock like you have a giant festival in las vegas that's humongous that everybody talks about you know like kids want to pick up guitars now uh you know like we're we're playing baseball stadiums blink 182 is going on tour like i just think that like (laughs) that's so fucking crazy i mean it's crazy you know what i mean but like i think it's like and it's generational dude like it's 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 people who had their first concert with you they're with their kids crazy which is absolutely Goosebumps. Yeah, actually. pretty like, crazy. Yeah. yeah, that's actually crazy. Um, but I think that the, the the listen the algorithm. If we're gonna talk about it, like the algorithm does not support alternative music the way it supports other music. Um, and I think that that like this is again a conversation that we could have that could like last for hours. Like because like a lot of the algorithm is like being designed to for playlists that are like Nordstrom or something like that. And totally. so like you're not gonna put like heavy metal on it or something like that. So it's like just like music that's like comfortably in the background or something like that. Um, that being said, I don't know if you want alternative music there. Like I don't think like when I like when I discovered it, I thought it was so cool that like it was my own thing or something like that, you know? Um, but I think it's, I, I think it's clearly people want to go out and see it live. And hopefully there, are you know, bands that are just starting out. Like, that's what I really care about. It's like bands that are just starting out. Like, how do you get any traction at all? Like, especially if like you don't fit into the algorithm, you know what I mean? Like it's very difficult. And so like, 
I mean, I, I try to embolden those those artists and take them under our wing, but like I, I do think that that's a difficult thing right now. That That is difficult. Well, it's finding access to audience. It's finding platform. You know, it's where you used to break artists. Alternative radio used to be a tastemaker. It's not. Streaming is a tastemaker to a certain degree. Totally, but like... The problem is, is like, I think oftentimes, A, it's not a person anymore. Like, totally. we're, we're dealing with, like, an actual algorithm. There's not even anybody to go, like, like I'm going to go over here and, like, yell at somebody. No, like, like yeah. I was talking about yelling about the, the Celsius. <laughs> there is no person. Yeah. It's not. You know what I mean? Yeah, like, it, we're, it, we're dealing with Skynet. You know it, what I mean? Think about back in the day. Like, you used to go and, like, knock on program directors' doors and beg them to play your record or go take pictures with their fucking children to yeah. get them to make the yeah. ad. Like, you could take tangible steps yes. that were within your control and reach. Yeah. And so it's, like, I think it's, like, a... I, I mean, blessing and the curse is the wrong word, but like as we step into the future of it all, like life where you're your own curator is dope because you can get like like crazy stuff can break through and you can get movies like everything everywhere. Like there's a, there's potential for things that are would be so outside that would not have access yeah. to a tastemaker that can get get through now, but at the same time, like I think we are losing artists. We're losing. Wait, does. Does Beyonce have to wear one of these things when she comes in? This no. is my main question of the day. Wait, everyone. Okay, has I'm gonna to finish wear this them. thought I had, but like, <laughs> if Beyonce came in, I'm gonna be honest. With if you? Beyonce came in, would the security person be like, Beyonce, the the brother, tag must go on your shirt, brother? I think Jeff Bezos has to wear one, yeah. and no, I'm not joking. Right. Courtney Cox drove in in front of me the other day, yeah. and I watched her go through the same security process that I went through. Have to wear her badge on her lapel. I think every, you know, this is the great equalizer. COVID, and then the Amazon campus. Everybody I, has the opportunity. I'd feel to totally cool wearing this if I was Jeff Bezos. I was like, <laughs> yeah. As you yeah, walk around, uh, you go, yeah. <laughs> this is my company. <laughs> From his garage. So I would get this, this. If I was Jeff Bezos, I'd get this tattooed on me. <laughs> Visitor pass? Yeah. Uh, so, But what I will say is that. Um, you can take it off. Yeah, well, I will say that I think. I think we are. You should stick these on somewhere and have it be become a thing. That'd be cool. And just like that, you win the fucking idea of the oh maybe the God. year. How have we not thought of that? If that's the idea of the year, then the bar is very fucking low. Welcome to the Zach Sang Show. <laughs> I love it. Good to see you. <laughs> wow. Uh, hey. I, I, I will say that I think we we are losing artists, movies, whatever to the algorithm, and I think that there probably are artists that are becoming disenchanted. Um, like I would assume that like if you don't get and I've seen it and I've like met with people and I don't even really know what to say like who like how do you break through like what is the last like how many new artists have broken like Lil Nas um, Jack Harlow um, you, you just don't like songs break but there's just not artists and I think like the way break has been redefined you know yeah. what does it mean to break that's a that's great that, like, like like do you get like it, Lil Nas X and Jack Harlow break to the point of they didn't sell out tours. Right. But can everyone sell out tours like that? Right. But you can still have a number one. Uh, you can still have great streaming records. You can still have three follow-up great records. You can still have great radio support and still not sell out a, a single venue. I mean, it's crazy that, like, we'll be in the mall. I'll be in the mall with my kid, and they'll be like, oh, that's what this song is. And I'm like, oh, they just knew a part of the song from TikTok. That's like, they it. didn't even know the song. They didn't even know the rest of the song. And that's where I don't, like... I do think that there's a responsibility and I'm just getting into this more and more is like, I'm starting to figure out like how to like, uh, like, should we have Bezos get rid of TikTok? I, <laughs> we'll, we'll buy it. Just kidding. <laughs> Actually, I think America would love it if we bought TikTok right now. Um, keep it alive in some way, shape or form. Um, but, but you know, it's really interesting. Like there's a responsibility. I'm trying to get into like music supervision, like to help like sync songs with like commercials and shit. Yeah. Just because you have a great- I have a couple things to pitch after the show, too. Go. Fuck yeah. <laughs> My, How like, good would that be? <laughs> whatever. We're uh, going to need a case of Celsius. Which one did he like again? Yeah. <laughs> uh, cherry green apple, because I'm interested. A really Arctic vibe. Uh, I find it interesting because there's a responsibility there. Just because there's a good 30 seconds doesn't mean the song happens to be great. And, like, I think there's a, it's, it's a balance, right? Just because this one clip of a song has the ability to- help bring to life a story, whether that story be in the form of a commercial or a TikTok. Yeah, that's amazing. But like once people go and check out the song, what else is there? Yeah. Like oh, what else sure. exists, you know? For sure. And I think also like there's a danger in swinging too far with the pendulum, you know, that entertainment industries all tend to do. Like I remember when you would get the CD in the long box and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. Why do they sell the CD in the long box? And it costs like the box costs this much for me to buy or whatever. And it's like, 
the pendulum swings so far, you know, and then you get Napster and shit, you know, because people are like, oh, you were just like, you know, and so like you wonder what the the swing back from the pendulum will be when people have invested so heavily in like just like one platform. Well, and now all the labels are catching up, right? So like all the labels are going, oh, we got to strip our radio promo departments of all these resources and we need to reinvest here. And it's like, sisters, like you're doing this now? Like TikTok was just on Capitol Hill about to be shut down. Are you crazy? Yeah, it's a little too late. Look, the corporations move like cruise ships, yeah. it, it, even bigger, and it takes them for fucking ever to catch up. Um, do, you, do you remember having to go to, like, radio station, or how did, like, Sugar Were Going Down or Dance Dance? Do you remember, like, pitching them for, for them to be, like, taken off? So Sugar happened in a super unique way where uh, we we made this, we made the, we made the album, we were like, we want to do, you know, we, they were like, we're, we're going to do a video for it. We were like, we want to do a video that's not like, like every video at the time was like a backyard party and like kids fall in the pool and like, you know, and then it's like part of, you know, like <laughs> literally if you look at the era, yeah, it's like there's that. so many videos like that. <laughs> and we we got like one treatment that was not like that type of treatment. And it was like this weird deer boy and whatever. And we were like, well, we're doing this one because it's weird. It doesn't make, you know, whatever. It's iconic. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, it was at the time it was just like. This is not like any of the other stuff. So at least it just doesn't look like any of the, the other stuff didn't wouldn't work for us. And so we were at a time when there was like a void of boy bands, right? And so on TRL, and I'm talking like TRL, like when it was like... Where would you go and break back in the day? TRL. Yeah, TRL yeah. was like TikTok and everything. It was like all of it all, combined in one that. place. You know what I mean? Like it, crazy. The whole like world people, was watching. Yeah, totally. I mean, the whole world, the fucking streets stopped in front of the window. Really crazy. You know what I mean? And so... We put the song out. Uh, radio didn't really f- mess with it. They like it was whatever, you know. Um, and then our fans just ran it up TRL, and then radio just had to play it. Yeah, because that's like, wow. and, and and that was cool. It was like at, at the time, like no one had the idea to do it like that. Like it just kind of happened organically. Um, but after that, life changes because they listen to everything a little bit differently. Radio, at least. Yeah, I think so. I think they have to, right? Like they have to listen a little bit, and that's where you get to the, the four foot crickets on, you know, the AMAs and stuff. Because like people are like, I don't, well, I don't know. The last one was like, we were wrong about the last one. The crickets might be a good idea, and it's like, no, they were a bad idea. <laughs> well, we're, speaking of music videos, we were talking about "Homie Like a Grudge." Whose idea was that to pick it up where Arms Race left off, like 13, 14 years ago? So when we, the first video that we made by ourselves, or like where we were allowed to write the treatment. Um, because we love movies and stuff. And the first one was Dance Dance. So we wrote Dance Dance, and it was, you know, supposed to be, uh, you know, John Hughes and all that kind of stuff, like, all mixed together. Um, And then when we were making Arms Race, like, I'm sure there was, like, I don't really remember it, but I'm sure there was, like, a little bit of a, like, this band's, like, not, you know, they... They're like sellouts or something. Like, I don't know if there was, but there was, like, just, we felt like that. You know, we felt like... How do we explain that we're like still making art, and how do we, you know what I mean? And but that's like a hard, like, the kind of questioning your own identity at the same time, right? It's really weird, and you're trying to like make two things like fit, two layers fit. And so, we when we made the arms race video, it was like let's pick up kind of where the dance dance video left off, but like let's have it be like like the dance dance video was like kind of unreal, and it was like all this like Hollywood like you know whatever thing, you know. And then I'd always wanted to do a follow-up to to the arms race video um we never had the right song never had the right album felt like we had it this time and i had the idea to do something where it was like i was like what if it's like i wanted it to feel like um like the un like a universe had never like fall boy like kind of like never happened or something and like you know, like Patrick's just like mowing the lawn in the suburbs and like whatever you know and i couldn't really like figure out exactly how to do it my friend um Brendan, who's the director on it, Brendan Walter, came up with, like, the iconic idea of, like, it, the broken leg and, like, tying it all so seamlessly. And I think that it really worked in the way, because it kind of, like, doesn't work in a weird way, but, like, it works the way that, like, Into the Spider-Verse and, like, Everything Everywhere and, like, the the multiverse, like, people are so keyed to multiverse now that, mm-hmm. like, you mm-hmm. can put out an idea that's, like, pretty crazy and people are like, well, okay. <laughs> Well, it I, makes sense in one in some dimension. <laughs> yeah. Totally. I also love how you guys are just like not afraid to make fun of yourselves. Like you have the story can't work unless Patrick's 
hat comes back. Yeah, yeah, totally. And then at the end, when like your 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 mom in the video calls and is like, I like the old Fall Out Boy better. Yeah, yeah. Is that you guys just kind of like mocking people who have criticized you in the past, saying like we like the old Fall Out Boy? I I I had a couple people say that to me, and I was like, oh, it was never like that. Um, no, it was never like like that. It was never meant in a mean spirited like kind of comeback kind of way. I guess it was more like people that I'm, you know, like when you're like friends with somebody or your parents or whatever and they're like they're like oh the other shirt looked better on you and you're like oh okay <laughs> it's kind of like the one of those things where mm. you're like you're like uh it's just like an awkward moment or like something like like i'm like i feel like people say stuff like that you know like and it is not meant in a like a way like they i mean it saying, innocently but it really is like fuck you <laughs> yeah i was hanging out with this i was hanging out with my friend the other day or this was a while ago like a year ago and um there was somebody there and, and who was in a movie that i'd seen and I kept being like, I love the movie, I love the movie, and blah, blah, blah. And it's like, I was like this fucking annoying guy, like, yeah, that movie is so fucking good, you know? And we left, and um, uh, oh, no. Megan was like, who I was with, was like, you know he's in other movies. <laughs> like, he's like, <laughs> it, like, can you imagine if someone came up and was like, the song, that you, the one song is so good. <laughs> like, <laughs> she was like, you sound insane. <laughs> But like you don't because like a lot of times I think you mean it as you no, mean it in a, a genuine kind of way, but it just comes off weird. And it's not even really weird if you don't like insert your ego into it. You yeah. know, like people come up to me like when I'm in the airport and they're like, I used to love you so much when I was 14. And I'm like, OK, they're like, oh, totally 29, you know, whatever. But like it's meant in a genuine way. Yeah. Like no one comes <laughs> up to someone and is like. Your stuff sucks. You know what I mean? They're telling you the stuff they, they they like about it or whatever. I used to go through a wave of depression when people would go, oh, I've been listening to you since I was a kid. And I'm like, sister, you literally look like you're maybe 13, you know? Totally. Like, what the I, fuck does that even mean? I mean, and people, it's just like we, and also time's like a funny thing, you know? Like the other the other day, somewhere, and someone was like, I grew up with Fortnite. And I'm like, you grew up with Fortnite? Yeah. Dude, you're like, <laughs> <laughs> like it's a, but then I thought about it and I was like, they kind of did, I guess. Yeah, you know what I mean? Did. But it's like, it but it's really, time is like a funny thing, you know? It's really scary. Yeah. Super scary. Why do you keep your hair growing out? Why? I don't know. Uh, well, okay. I just like it. And then like, there's like, um, there's a couple things with it, right? So there's a thing with like, uh, I guess with long hair and there's like all these things where I'm like, oh, like. My hair just does this, like, when I just move like this or whatever, and I'm like, oh, it wouldn't do that. If you had, like, your little short hair, it wouldn't do that again. And I guess less so than, like, because I think about cutting my hair, and I think about not cutting my hair. It's and, like, been whatever. long for a while. Yeah, totally. Um, I, I, I think about cutting it sometimes and, and not or whatever, but I think more, like, why... So that, but so that I don't really think about that much, like in a way that it's like a big thing or a little thing. Like, it's like, it'll get cut one day or, what, you know, whatever. Um, but... I think it's more like people are like, well, why would you not have your hair like the way it was? Like the kind of like swoop thing. And it's, it's, I don't really know how to explain it to someone other than like when you're, something about you becomes so big that it's like a Halloween costume. Yeah. The there's, hair. Yeah. There's a, there's a, there's a like true danger from, to me at least, if you don't authentically love the way it is, there's a danger in becoming like a parody of yourself, you know, like where you're like, I've like looked at myself even in the wigs and stuff. And I'm like, well, dude, if you don't like, be like believe this is how you should look and you don't own it, like it it's looks, not you. Yeah, it looks, it looks like it feels like a parody. It feels like an SNL sk skit kind of, you know what I mean? And that's not to say like, listen, like I see like kids rocking all kinds of like rad style that like I definitely could not, rock and and kids doing like throwback versions of the style but like with their own updated thing to uh. it you know whatever which i think is awesome it's just like i just have to like look the way i feel like looking like I, as we all do you know what i mean like as much as you can control how you feel on the inside going to the outside you have to like control that or like you know Fuck yeah. I, you know, I, I at first I thought that like the growth of hair could be connected to time but it is interesting that like you you did really kind of coin a hairstyle that would go on to, again, I've used generationally define once before, I'd say go on to define a generation, but also like go on to inspire like the Justin Bieber hairstyle and a bunch of hairstyles that then would be parry, uh, uh, fucking made fun of and totally examined and totally. looked at for fucking decades later. Totally. It's, it's one of those ones where you're like, 
I mean, I have it, brother. Was, like, was there was there a way to get a royalty on this? Like, I would that like that's that that's <laughs> the Bezos money right there. Did you get paid on the wigs. <laughs> that would be the Bezos money. <laughs> um, yeah, I I just like for me that must feel like shit though, kind of weirdly too, because something that was yours that you loved ended up becoming everybody else's, but then a joke. Yeah. Maybe in the moment, like if you were like in, if we were in 2010 and I was like feeling like low about other shit, like, yeah, for sure. But I think that like the thing you were talking about about time is like now the more time that's gone by, like I appreciate that anybody like cared about any of it or anybody blogged about it. You know, like I really appreciate like when someone comes up to me and they're like, I only like the, the take this to your grave or whatever. Like I'm like. God damn, it's cool that you like any of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, I really do have an appreciation for it that I think 10, 15 years ago that I wouldn't. You know what I mean? I wouldn't I wouldn't even make the the Hold Me Like a Grudge video where the hair, like, there's different hair. Because there's a bunch of different hair in that video. Like, yeah. I wore so many fucking wigs, man. It's like, <laughs> I was peeling glue off my head forever. Um, uh, but, like, I wouldn't have even done that. Because I couldn't have even, like, felt comfortable with it. You know what I mean? Like, there was times when i was wearing the like arms raised wig and i was like this is hilarious because i'm like that guy 15 years later it's like there's something so funny about this do you, you get know? transported back do you think of um i mean that must be trippy yeah i i think that when we were doing infinity on high there was such a like we had so we'd done from under the cork tree everything went supersonic we and while we were doing that it was like our first go at a song success, the art success. So we were saying yes to everything. We were on SNL. We were on what, you know, we were just kind of doing that. We did everything, you know what I mean? And we did it in every country. And so there wasn't time to really like process and think about like, this is your life. And I think that when we came to LA for the summer, maybe it was the fall. I can't really exactly. No, it was the summer to do infinity on high. There was like a lot of like, it like, it's like when you like, uh, open a, a a drink on a plane after it lands and you're like, wow, that bottle looks fucking crazy. You know what I mean? Like, I feel like there was a lot of like the memories and time like came out like really crazy because we had just not processed any of it. And so like, there was a lot of like, I don't know. You can like, you have like Jay Z's numbers, but like you can't like actually call him cause you're like not friends with him, but like it's in your phone or something. You know what I mean? Like just like these things that like, Listen, I'm glad it was, like, only for a year or whatever because it's, like, too much, you know, for, like, a, a brain. It's actually kind of how I feel about, like, the internet and phones. Like, we're not really, like, meant to be processing and, like, looking at oh. all this shit all the time. Like, it's, like, not – like, we're just – our brain doesn't feel designed for that, you know what I mean? And I think the same way about the, like, that level of intense attention is, like, the same kind of thing. And I so I think that – I don't remember where I was going with this. Do you find any piece though that like just like you? Oh, okay. so look, look. Go. Oh, sorry, I'm gonna answer that. But so look, looking back on that time, like in that time, it was a lot of like, what the fuck are we doing, man? Like, what? Where are we? You know what I mean? Like, it's, and we were recording with like Babyface, but it's like, what are we? Where are we doing? You know what I mean? You're and not so, really there. Yeah, and so it, it was a little bit of that. I get that. What was the thing you just said? Oh, this, do you find any peace knowing that people like Jay Z are going through the exact same thing because humans in general? As a whole, we're not wired to process shit like that? I find it, I find it, um, I find it great to know that, like, we all have different neuroses and different feelings and different feelings of loneliness and am I good enough and how long will this last? Like, if they, everyone has it. And, and Or you have different versions of it. So, oh. like, those might not be yours, but, like, everyone, and I think that, like, the more, like, to me, it's great to see, like, curb your enthusiasm though it's a comedy i'm like listen like this guy has like a lot of feelings that i have like you know what i mean like uh, it, like he, he's like a very misanthropic person but like kind of mr magoo's his way through it or whatever um and i think that yeah i mean yes i think that it, it's great to know that other people are going through it and, and honestly are going through it it's wild what are uh, you thinking well the 20th anniversary of take the sea your grave is right around the corner <clears throat> when you guys were making that did you ever think like this band could turn into what it is today. Like we always had ambitions that were a little bigger than we should. Like when we were, you know, not able to play um, a little club like the Fireside Bowl, we wanted to play this cl club called the Metro, which we definitely couldn't play because it held like 2,000 people or whatever, you know. And so we always, the ambitions were like a little, always a little too big, you know what I mean? Um 
at the same time, um, I think that like every record could have been our last record. Like every time we and and not in a like fuck you, blah blah blah, but just like kind of like, uh, anytime people like re- react or like a song works or people like a show or something, it's like oh god, I guess we get to keep doing this. It's like I guess how stand ups would feel like where you're like. Well, they laugh for the first two minutes, so I get to do another minute or whatever. You know what I mean? What, uh, interesting that you would approach each album like it was your last, but would you approach it that way, or was it when it was done and out that you would think it would be your last? Could be our last. Could you know be. what I mean? Like, it was like... But also also a little bit like leave 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 nothing. You know what I mean? Like, there's a little bit of like... And I love the quote from uh, Gattaca, which is, again, Ethan Hawke, who's on our album... Um, but, like, when him and Jude Law would, like, swim across the lake when they were kids or whatever, the out of the ocean, he was just like, I never left anything for the swim back. And, like, I think that that's the, the, the whole thing. It's like, you can't leave anything. Like, you have to put everything into it. I got a Celsius burp here. No, go go for it. Wow, it's still kind of picked up. <laughs> that Jesus. was nice. Yeah. It was God. good. But with Take This to Your Grave, that was, like, a very grungy sound or, like, the early days of Fall Out Boy. It Come- was recorded in the studio where they... Uh, they actually, I think, recorded some of. Um, never mind. It definitely sh- oh. garbage for sure was recorded there. Really? Yeah. Keep where was that? Lo- where Where was that? Smart Studio? Studios in Wisconsin. <laughs> yeah, in Madison, Wisconsin. Well, so so coming out of that, it's like giving you guys some success. What makes you want to drop the screaming, drop the grunge sound, and go more of a pop sound? So, um, I mean, to me, it's like crazy. Yeah, so, like, things are gradient, right? Like, so, like, if I talk to you about it, right, like, we could be, like, you know, From Under the Cork Tree is, like, more of a pop sound than Take This to Your Grave. But I'm, like, talking to, like, my mom's friends about it. They're, like, they both sound the same, like, except <laughs> one album is blue or whatever. You know what I mean? Like, there's, like, <laughs> they don't know. you know, like, it, and it's not, like, really pop to them. You know what I mean? They're, like, if you, if I called Sugar a pop record, like, even calling it a pop record when we were at you know, our label, Island Def Jam, like the, you see the color drain out of the A&R's faces because they're like, well, it's, we meant it would be good at alternative. Like, this is not a pop record. You know what I mean? And so, less so than like, uh, than making something pop, I think that after Take This to Your Grave, we were like, we want to make a different, something that's substantially different and this is our chance to do it because if we wait three records in people are going to be like what are you doing you know what i mean and i think there's a lot of artists like you either go and you make different iterations of the same thing and it's it's niche or it's big or whatever but like i always loved like david bowie or the clash uh like these artists where they just change so much and it's so sad when they change because you're so invested in uh, Ziggy or you're so invested in it but like now today um, in my 40s I'm like oh I can listen to all these different records because there's different ones that fit my mood and some of them I'm just like that doesn't work for me now or whatever. It's uh, people evolving. Yeah and so like we always wanted to be like kind of honest with that um, yeah and I think also like we just wanted to make like big pop art or something you know like i mean just but stuff that was like it's just like i don't think those songs would work uh i think if other bands did them it's just something like unique about like those songs like listen they're not like the the best songs i wouldn't hold them up against anything but there is something unique about them like where they're like a little different you know or whatever and and so like i think that that was always our way in was like they were like a little different and i think that they all are similar because patrick's voice is so singularly Patrick that like mm-hmm. you can like listen to I could listen to Sugar and then listen to My Songs No You Did in the Dark or whatever you know and like they do work but like yeah we just wanted to change between each we we, we knew that right away and it was scary the first time because like the first time I think it w- we would have told ourselves if you make more songs like Where Is Your Boy and like kind of like just do this blueprint but now you're on a major label this will work because there's proof of concept because it worked on a small, it's worked in a small way. And so it was a little scary. You know what I mean? Like it was a little like intimidating to not do it. Yeah. I think it's scary, but if you guys never made that jump, I don't think you'd be sitting here today selling out baseball stadiums. Yeah. Well, thank you for that. Um, I think, yeah, I mean, I not that the music was bad, but like, I don't think, yeah, I get what you're saying. Yeah. There's a bigger audience when you guys change the sound a bit. Yeah, Yeah. Totally. And I think it's like, you always have to do, what's authentically you. I think that that really is what works about you guys show is like, you have to be authentic to 
you, even if it's not the biggest or it's not the what like because the rest it's gonna eventually not work. Is it like the doing something that's inauthentic eventually doesn't work? And by the way, it's way hard to do something that is inauthentic. It's hard it's to super hard, up and, and it's super hard because you're always thinking like. What would this person do? <laughs> what would a person like that say? Well, and then at the end of the day, it's like it, people read through bullshit so easily and they don't want that. They just want honesty and unfiltered relationship and companionship and they want understanding that is not uh, littered in bullshit or beating around the bush or you know, totally nonsense. By the way, in honor of the 20th anniversary, you should listen to Take This to Your Grave. We're going to put a link in the description below to listen to all Fall About Boys music on Amazon Music. You should also listen to the new album, uh, so much for Stardust. I said that correct, even the parentheses with the four. Sure, yeah, yeah, yeah totally. Baby Annihilation. What the fuck? Um, <laughs> I'm assuming it's more. It, it gives interlude energy because it's a little over sixty seconds, but like, Baby Annihilation. Yeah. So, I think that there's people often ask. I think, and I do too. Like you ask artists to do something that's similar to what they've done before or like a version of it and like usually you can't do it right but then i think you sometimes see something like uh you see like the mandalorian and you're like ah like there's the energy of like that era but this is like and it feels like i'm looking at something from that but it also feels like new yeah, it's now you know and so i was like on this album i was like i feel like a spoken word which is something we've kind of done before you know we did it on infinity i can't remember which ones we did it on but we did it Infinity and Fully Adieu or something like that. And uh, or maybe it was Sugar, uh, maybe it was from the Court Tree and Fully Adieu. I can't remember. But um, we, I was like, this I think is something we can do. We can do like an updated version of this. Like I do have something to say. I think it'll be different. I think it'll be like our version of Baby Yoda or something because it's like something we've done, but it's like we haven't really done it. You yeah. know what I mean? Um and it ended with, uh, like, the last thing is, like, what is there between us if not a little annihilation? So the song was a lot of, for, like, a lot of time, lo a long time. It was Tempt in lil, lil Annihilation. And I was like, it's like a baby annihilation. And then that became the title. And then people were like, what does baby annihilation mean? And it's like, it's just like a little, like a little bit. Oh, isn't that the last two words you say on the song? I, I think, think so. I think yeah. it is little annihilation. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so that's, like, where that came from. You got to listen to the album. So much for Stardust. Is... Is that a sugar we're going down reference on tenure when you say we're going low, low instead of we're going down, down? Oh, that's great. We would have to ask Patrick on that one if that was what the, like, I mean, I, I wrote it and I don't think I wrote it with that intent, but how he sings it, now that I'm thinking about it, he sings it and it's got a, a similar thing to that. As and he would do something like that. As soon as I heard me, it, I replayed it. And not tell it. me about it, knowing I'd be sitting in some fucking interview and someone asked me. <laughs> Damn, I thought I had something good there. <laughs> I, I was, think you do. I, I was, think you do. I think he probably. I would say he doesn't do things like that unintentionally. So if you heard it, probably. Yeah, because if he didn't do that on purpose, like, that's a weird coincidence. We're going down, down, and we're going low, low. Yeah, I could see it. I mean, we like an Easter egg. That's yeah. filled with fucking tea. <laughs> yeah, I like it. It's good. Um, Do you guys see yourself going forever? Like, when you see the Rolling Stones playing in their 80s, 90s, whatever, however old Mick Jagger is, do you see your guy, like, follow Mick up? Mick Jagger, I just saw, like, his TikTok or something the other day. It's so good. <laughs> He's like... Digging in his garden. It's really good. It's it's very interesting. 79 years old. Yeah, 79. 79. Um, Do you see yourselves like doing it this that long? And even if it's not performing, it's making new albums. Yeah. I mean, I think it's got to be making art for sure because that's the most we enjoy about it, you know, is like doing it. And, and, and I don't know, 79 seems so far, but maybe... We'll see you then. <laughs> we'll be back. Yeah, you can, right here. <laughs> in however many years, we'll be here still. Uh, seriously, though, listen to all Fall Out Boys music. We have the entire discography available on Amazon Music, obviously. Um, it, it is interesting. Like In a conversation that uh, has come up a couple times, Ed Sheeran has actually been working on five albums that's going to be released after he's dead. Oh. Yeah. That's interesting. Like, Dark, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like, he's working on five albums that will be that'll released. come out after he's dead. Yeah, posthumously. I mean, like, this is, like, some people are just so, like, prolific. <laughs> like, I could be, we could barely get through one while we're alive, man. <laughs> like, it took us five years to make one, and we're alive and healthy. You know what I mean? God, that is crazy. Uh, so, so no one to uh, just have an archive of music that's untouched. I mean, listen, if go. Ed can... can Rip five. Can you rip one for Fallout Boy? Yeah. Just like <laughs> just, one that's got kind of Fallout Boy. <laughs> one that's got kind of Fallout Boy vibes to it. 
I mean, Ed Sheeran could probably do that. I would think so. Yeah, if anyone can, it's him. Yeah. Thank you, Pete Wentz, for giving us your time yeah, today. It really guys. means the world, and you don't need to do any of this charity, but you do. Um, well, sorry I was late. It took me a while to f- figure out how to get through the parking. No, thank you for putting up with it. I, you know, listen, I got a Celsius out of it. That's And you know what? That's all that matters. <laughs> Please listen to Fall Out Boy's music. Link in the description below. Listen to the new album, 20th anniversary. Damn, holy shit. Time flies when you're having fun. <laughs> I guess it's weird. Can you listen to Can you listen to Take the Steer Grave and So Much for Stardust? Like, do you listen to them differently, or when you listen to it, is it just like you're listening to your own music? I don't ever listen to Fall Out Boy. I listen to it incessantly while we're making it, and then once it's done, I have like never want to hear it again. And then I'll be like at a coffee place or something, and it comes on, and I'm always like, "Did they put it on? Because I'm here, or is it like just they're they're on the Nordstrom's playlist, and somehow it's <laughs> Fall Boy's found its way onto it or something?" Uh, it makes me feel so uncomfortable. Really? Yeah, I don't just don't have the vibe of like, "It's me, let's go," or like, "It's us, let's do it." You know what I mean? Like, it's just like, turn it down. Let me perform free live. You know what I mean? It's like I don't know. Do you ever feel like it's not you though? Because if I'm on the internet and I see a clip from our show, even though I know it's us and I'm here, like it almost seems like something that I'm not a part of. Oh, I don't know if that makes sense. Like you're seeing it from the outside. Yeah, like I'm seeing it from the outside, and I don't feel like I'm a part of what I'm actually looking at. If I see a random clip, we should. That sounds that like you have like a very healthy. I think it's probably like a healthy thing. It's right? like a disconnect. Yeah, in a way. it sounds like. Damn, jealous. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't have that at all. Okay. <laughs> yeah, like I, when I see it, when I see the shit, I'm like, oh my god, you were wearing that? Yeah. That's fucking <laughs> crazy, bro. You told me you were just gonna keep growing your hair out. That's crazy that that's what you said. <laughs> <laughs> Pete wins, everybody. You're fucking amazing. Thanks, man. Thanks for being here. Thank you.